Today I thought I'd sum up just how I think Battlefield Hardline is so far. Um, it's going to be my last video for the beta. I got myself up to level 10 about a week ago, so it's uh, it's not taken all that long to make sure I get some exclusive stuff when the game actually comes out. If you guys aren't aware of that, if you get to level 10 in the Hardline beta, then you get an exclusive battle pack and like an in-game patch, which kind of like replaces the dog tags. Yeah, you get that if you buy the game at launch, so uh, it looks like I've scored myself some points there. So all you have to do is reach level 10 and you can unlock that. But yeah, for my final hardline video until the next beta comes around or the release actually comes around, I thought I'd sort of sign off with just how I think it's actually been. So like the good, the bad and the ugly kind of thing. It'd be a really good way to sort of interact with you guys and get your reactions to the beta because I know that hardline has gone down very well with some people. It's been a mixed reaction in the middle and there's been quite a few people that haven't really liked hardline either. So I thought it'd be a really good video to get everyone's views together and then kind of just react with everybody and see how we are with the game. So let's start off with the good things about Hardline. I'm going to be quite specific in the points that I pick out because I don't just want to generalise it by saying, yeah, Hardline's really good. Um, you kind of want to know specifics as to why I think it's good. So the first thing that I really appreciate and I really like about Hardline is the headshot indicator. You guys might have been aware that when you get a headshot in Hardline or at least one of your bullets hits a player's head, the crosshairs go red so you know exactly when you've hit somebody in the target zone that you're aiming for. Obviously, if you go for a headshot, you're going to do more damage, and it really helps out in knowing where you hit that player. I kind of think it's been put in there under the emphasis of the netcode problems we had in Battlefield 4, where you kill people so fast and then people didn't realise how they got killed. The flip side of that, and I'll show it on the screen right now actually, is the kill card indicator as well. I think that's a really nice touch. On the kill card you can see exactly where the player shot you with his last bullet to get that kill. So sometimes you'll be able to see he shot you in the arm, he shot you in the head, he shot you in the leg, etc. It's just a really good way of visually knowing whether that guy got a good kill on you, got a lucky kill on you, got a headshot. Then you can stand up and say, yeah, he definitely deserved that kill or, oh yeah, he got a really lucky kill there. Those two things together, the red hit marker and the body indicator to show where you got killed, is a really nice addition to the game. Second thing, for me at least, the gunplay feels really nice. It feels a little bit like CTE in Battlefield 4, but it just feels a bit better. I think there's probably less going on in this game than there is in Battlefield 4. You haven't got too many vehicles to contend with, or at least sort of like fighting vehicles. They're more just transport vehicles. I really like the way that the guns actually play. They feel unique. They don't feel like you're firing the same weapon all the time. That's kind of a problem I had in Battlefield 4 where the fast rate of fire weapons all just felt the same. I like the fact that in the assault class or the operator class, you have the M16 which was fast firing, you had the AKM which dealt loads of damage and had a little bit more recoil and then you had the G36 that sort of sat in the middle as well and that sort of difference between all of the weapons made a big difference for me because it felt like each gun that I picked up had its own characteristics and I could get to use that gun in a way I wanted to. Moving on to a couple of bad things about Hardline, my first one is the player models. Now a lot of people mentioned this to me in the comments section that they didn't really feel that the cops versus robbers scene really fitted. I happen to disagree with that but I do happen to agree with a couple of people were saying that the player models are very difficult to differentiate classes. Because obviously the game is very fresh and new and the setting is very new as well, it's going to take a little bit of time for people to realise which class of player is represented by which character clothing options that you have available. I think it's just going to take a little bit of getting used to to start with, but at the same time I think there could be some improvements made just to make it easily identifiable as to which class you're fighting against, because at the moment I can't see a massive difference between the robber classes in particular. The police classes is not too bad, but again they're all wearing similar uniform. I think there could just be a few changes made to differentiate between each class, and I think that would help in a lot of gunfights, because then you'd have sort of a subconscious idea of knowing what weapon you're going to come up against and then you can know how to play that gunfight. The second thing and I know this is split into the good the bad and the ugly but this is one of the things that really gripes on me with Hardline is the player movement it feels so lethargic it's like you've got concrete blocks stuck to your feet it feels like you're moving so slowly and I don't know if it is any slower I haven't asked the devs that 
I'm got a feeling that it's going to be the same as Battlefield 4, but they've done something to the animation and the player movement that has just made it feel so slow and sluggish. It just feels like it takes me such a long time to get anywhere that I have to use a vehicle in order to go fast. I'd really like it if they could adapt that animation somehow, or whatever they've done to the player movement could be reverted back or sped up a little bit, just to give me that sort of subliminal like kind of message to know that my player is actually moving at the right speed, because I'm very confident that he is sort of moving at the right speed, but it looks as if I'm moving very slow. So if the tweak could be made to sort of speed that up or rectify that, that'd be great. And finally, we come on to the ugly things, and there are a fair few of them in Hardline. A lot of them have been rectified, or commitments have been made to rectify them, or at least opinions have been given directly to developers to know that they really shouldn't be in the game. One of those is the survivalist perk for the operator class, and this gives you the ability to revive yourself after you've been killed. Trust me, it gets annoying if you've played the beta, which I guess a lot of you have, you'll know just how damn annoying this thing is. It feels like you've been cheated out of a kill, especially when you get a couple in a row and both of them are using the survivalist perk and both of them manage to get back up again. It just feels like I've been cheated out of a kill. I know I still get to keep the kill, but at the end of the day, should they really be allowed to get back up if I've killed them? Not really. So for me, that needs to be removed from the game. And the second thing is the interrogation feature. My understanding at the moment is that if you can take down an enemy player using a non-lethal melee weapon, and by that I mean you do the animation to actually kill somebody, um, you can sort of handcuff them and then interrogate the player. If you hold E over the body after you finish the knife animation, then you can interrogate them and show up all the enemies on the minimap. Now I'm unsure as to whether only the squad can see that, or your whole team can see that. Now, if your whole team can see it, then I think that's completely overpowered, and it should be limited back to just your squad seeing that. That would be a good implementation. But at the same time, your reward for killing that player is a nice animation, and it humiliates the player because they can't be revived from that. That should surely be enough. Why should then you be given the ability to then light up the whole enemy team for either your squad or your own team and make it ridiculously easy to kill people. I, I don't really see how that adds up, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of a cool feature. So if it was removed, I wouldn't mind, or if it was sort of nerfed down to just your squad, then that would be fine. So those are my loves, hates, and absolute gripes for Hardline. Uh, let me know down in the comments today if you agree with what I've said or if you've got some other things that you want to say. And just get some comments going down there because it'd be really good to get a perspective on how you feel this beta's gone. But thank you very much for watching today, guys. That's the end of the video. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.